Morris. I'm the editor of Variety.com, and with me I have Matt Dentler, the director of the South by Southwest Film Festival. So this is the 15th year. What do you guys feel like you've got left to do after being, after doing this for 15 years? It's really interesting because um, every year in the last five or six years, it feels like it's gotten you know a little bit bigger every single year. And um, you know, I think that we're at a really pivotal point right now, where you know, unlike a lot of other festivals that have sort of you know created their identity and maintain their identity and they are, you know, the festival that they're always going to be, whether they're can or whether they're, you know, a tiny, you know, small town regional festival. Um, but I really think that South by Southwest is one of those festivals, one of the few festivals that, you know, is still kind of changing and growing and could kind of go in any direction. And uh, so I think that that's really exciting, um, but also really unpredictable. Um, but, you know, the biggest thing that I'm trying to do now is we're trying to really open up the opportunities for the international climate and the international industry. You know, we've we've definitely, you know, I think planted our flag in North America, but we're doing our best to sort of start reaching overseas. How do you guys see yourselves fitting in with things like like the Mumblecore movement? You guys get some amount of credit for helping launch that. Um, first of all, do you think you deserve that credit? And second of all, why? Why would uh, South by Southwest be a good place to develop that as opposed to, say, Sundance? First of all, you know, it's, 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 ki it's kind of ridiculous all these films uh, are, are getting all this attention. I mean, it's great, ridiculous in a good way. You know, big features in Rolling Stone and New York Times and all this stuff. Um, but, you know, it's interesting. I, th I think that we were a very pivotal part of that, but at the same time, we're very careful not to really take much credit because, you know, those filmmakers made those films on their own. Now, a lot of the films that have now subsequently happened over the years did happen out of collaboration that came from meeting at South by Southwest, but, you know, uh, you know people like Andrew Bajowski or the Duplass brothers or Joe Swanberg, you know, all those guys, they made their films for themselves. Um, the fact that we were able to provide a venue for them and we were able to provide an opportunity that they may not have found at other festivals is great and we love that. Um, but, you know, I'm really careful to sort of not say that we're part of Mumblecore, you know, or whatever that means, because we didn't make the films. We just decided to show them, and the audiences and the, and the, and the, and the industry are the ones who responded to them. Uh, we would rather kind of be in the, in the background with that. It's been a while uh, since there was a real sort of interesting American independent film scene community, you know. Uh, back in the, you know, the, the, the early to mid-'90s, it was all about, you know, Tarantino and Rodriguez and Richard Linklater and, and those guys. And I wouldn't necessarily say that Mumblecore is the, you know, four rooms crew, you know, in 2008. But at the same time, I do think that there is something really attractive about this idea of like a group of American independent filmmakers who all work together, all collaborate, are all friends. And it, I think it kind of builds a lot of hope for a lot of other younger filmmakers to sort of see that, oh, hey, I can make personal films about my life with my friends without a big budget and they're going to get international attention. I think that, you know, part of it is just the fact that, you know, it is such an inclusive environment here and it's not, you know, it's 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 more inclusive here than it is at some of the bigger festivals. And that's sort of the the philosophy behind a lot of these films. Uh, what do you think will be the buzz films for this year's festival? So everything from the big Hollywood stuff to the smaller indies, I think there's a lot of, a lot of things that are going to have a good launch pad from here. I think that there's a lot of really great, exciting documentaries as well, like this documentary Crawford about the town in Texas that is a really cool, somewhat balanced look at this town and how it's evolved over the last 10 years and how in a, a way George W. Bush setting up a ranch in Crawford has made that town sort of a microcosm for the nation. In other words, you sort of see the, the ebbs and the flows of how that town evolved and it really resembles the, the, the nation at large. One film that I'm really excited about is this film called Wellness uh, that's playing in the narrative feature competition because it's a film about this uh, salesman who's kind of unknowingly, or rather he doesn't want to admit that he's a part of a pyramid scheme, and it's just about his sort of depression and in this really hilarious way um, about how he just can't get it right, and uh, you know, you never even know really what it is he's selling. And it's a really weird film shot like a documentary. He, if people walk in and you know within the first five minutes and don't know otherwise, they might think it's a documentary. Um, there's that film. There's another great film called Explicit Ills, um, which is the directorial debut of Mark Webber, the actor, and it's got a great cast, Paul Dano, Rosario Dawson, great soundtrack. I'm really psyched for people to see that as well. Cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.